The past, the present, the future. This is Friday Night Fright. What the planet is listening to. Hello, this is Ian Austin of Friday Night Fright fame, and it's the fourth episode of Shadow Mania. And this movie today is called Escape from Tomorrow and is described as a father's trip to Disney World with his family turns into a surreal nightmare of no way out. Brilliant. That sounds great. I look for, I'm actually genuinely looking forward to watching that because I have no idea whether this is actually sanctioned by Disney or what. Um, I don't know who Randy Moore is, but it's made in 2013. It's 90 minutes long, and that's definitely a fantastic pitch. The um, the poster shows an image of a familiar white gloved mouse's hands dripping blood. So I'm I'm all in. I will see you in just a few tits after the allocated bit of sponsorship, and then hope I'll be summarising reviewing movie for you. So I'll catch you in just a second. Hey guys, so I just watched Escape from Tomorrow and I would be honest, I kind of love this movie. Um, By virtue of that, I mean I don't really understand it. I'm not entirely sure Disney approved it. Um, I'm not sure how it got made. It, not, not, so not sure if it makes any sense, but I, I kind of love this. It was... um strange surreal as the thing said this cruel said strange surreal fun uh, weird odd very odd um abstract kind of artistic at points but generally just uh utterly original horror movie and i don't say that too often especially after the first two movies teeth and devil's rejects which teeth is watchable and devil's rejects is anything but but this and Woodshock are both the sort of horror movies I think a app like Shudder should have. You know, it's like we complain too often about horror movies having jump scares and not feeling like they've had thought put into them. And this really did, because in some ways you need to say it's not a horror movie. It's more of a surreal, artistic exploration for someone's mental breakdown. But at the same time, that is a horrifying thing. Horror can play... Uh, Mental health can play a big part in horror movies, and it does in this one particularly. I'm just fascinated by how this got made, to be honest, because I can't see Disney signing off on this, but I can't see them having... The, they did, according to the opening credits, but I can't see them being allowed to make this without Disney being involved. I mean, this is not just a movie tangibly connected. This is actually a movie shot in a Disney location. <sighs> actually a movie shot in Disney location and actually name checks Disney and actually has people who went to Disney Park which kind of blows my mind too because how to get them sign off on it but a uh, just strange movie I mean definitely recommended um, I would say if you want to watch an interesting original horror movie I would say Escape from Tomorrow is definitely one you should take chance on shudder and now comes part where i have to throw out a few spoilers because i need to talk about this movie i can't talk about avengers endgame so i need to talk about well i probably can when this goes out i can't when i record it so i need to talk about this movie so from three minutes in about 10 seconds i'll start doing spoilers okay definitely recommend the movie though you should watch it it's very entertaining and i'll just recap some of the Batshit insane stuff. Okay, so spoilers from now on. Um, uh, how to describe this movie in the simplest terms? A uh, man with his family goes to a Disney park, starts flirting with uh, two teenagers of a questionable age, uh, gets cat flu, meets a robot scientist, um, uh, flirts with a nurse, has sex with a witch, um, almost loses his kids, gets in a fight with a verbal fight with a man, thinks think it's a man, a you know, mobility scooter, uh, loses a toe, 
Um, and generally just seems to uh, the same thing's madness. And that's the simplest explanation. The real truth is there's something messed up in the air that forces him into this. You've got sci- robot scientist who knows about first time this guy ever came to Disney location. Apparently Disney is Siemens, the mobile phone company, is responsible for the upkeep for Disney. Disney. Fucking, the Epcot ball explodes at one point, then unexplodes. Um, and there's lots of cuts and scrapes everywhere. So I think it's fair to say this movie, uh, I, when I said about cuts and scrapes everywhere, it was the official 420 mark of this segment. So that says it all. But yeah, just a very strange movie. It's shot in a very interesting way. There's colour schemes black and white, which might be a budget thing, but lends it an even more surreal abstract feel to it you know it's like it's trying to do something a bit different um lots of weird jarring camera cuts but in a sort of progressive story way not just for the sake of it actually trying to tell a decent story some nice um cuts at start um showing faces and horror um nice way of it kind of does something that the um that play awful truthful dare movie did where people faces change and you see the evil demonic face underneath but it's done in a more subtle way a bit less um over the top goofy <sighs> oh, I'm really up a storm today yeah it's playing for a lot of um uh camera tricks but in a cool way shot very Slightly conservatively, um, the acting is very good all round. Actually, even kids. I mean, the um, the main, the um, little boy. Sorry, um, Elliot is just uh, that kid. Either naturally looks creepy, or he's got really good, um, really good ability to do creepy eyes. But he's creepy. Um, the dad is. Um and my, and the parents are both increasingly um batshit insane. The dad gets the majority of screen time. I forgot his name. Shit, I always forget names, but he gets bulk of screen time. And gets and he has to work for some weird stuff. And just generally, the the universe around them is so weird because it seems being all myths are true thing, where all this weirdness. I mean, you've got teenagers who are actually cats. You've got witches. You've got robots. Um. Yeah, just strange. I mean, I still don't know how Disney approved this, but I am aware of time watching it. Very entertaining movie, very um bizarre, avant-garde. And it's the sort of thing, like, I really feel like we should have more of this on in horror movies in general. I, I don't know if this was necessarily playing big cinemas, but it'd be nice to see stuff like this get more of a mainstream shot, you know? I mean, uh, or... I would love to have seen the Sing Sigma, to be honest. There's a few bits which might have been quite um, disorientating in Sigma, like um, uh, close-ups of a half-naked witch having sex with a married man tied to bed. But at the same time, you know, sometimes you see something a bit, bit risque, a bit blue at the Sigma, and that doesn't corrupt you entirely. So, yeah, I, I enjoyed this movie. I thought... The, I don't really understand a lot of it, so it needs a rewatch at some point. But yeah, it's very good. And nice part is even stuff I've mentioned about the spoilers. Like, if you know those going in, it's not really going to change anything. This movie's still going to be quite a trip, the experience. And actually, in some ways, as much as I praise Woodshock and I thought the tone and the aesthetic of that was very good, this feels a lot more like a drug drug take movie where you've taken some drugs and um wood shot did i imagine if you got high and watched this you would be on fucking cloud 967 you know you start believing the show like supernatural could be on 15 seat could be on season 15 next year but yeah definitely um i'm very sleep deprived so maybe i it's not quite what i'm portraying it be but i i think the idea of a Movie set in a Disney park, which is this weird, which has, you know, all this shit in it and all this bizarreness and is just generally sh- made in a dreamlike fashion and a lot of avant-garde, but also matter-of-fact black and white for 
photography and visualization, and just generally a dis uh, accurate portrayal of descent into madness of someone who may have cat flu. I loved it. I thought it was great. So definitely recommend this one. And it seems like we're on the upswing now. After a rocky start, show the mania. We're starting to kick things into next gear, which is very good. And now it's time to discuss or try and figure out what will be on the next edition. Um, yep, so we're going to go for Aimer tomorrow, which is um, 2010 French in 87 minutes. So, yeah, Aimer is going to be on the next subject movie for Sugar Mania. So, until then, until we get to Aimer, remember, find us on Twitter at Fry Night Fright. Find us on all your favourite podcast stations and platforms. And if you want to leave a review, that'd be fantastic. But until next time, remember, life is beautiful. <laughs>